To illustrate how I think this was done, I'm building a fairly crude model. And even though I can't even come close to the scale of the originals, I do want to get the proportions right on the individual stones because I think that's an important factor. I did some calculations to determine how many blocks I would need and figured around 200 would do, except that's just around the perimeter of the pyramid, like the outside. It wouldn't be practical for me to make enough to fill up the interior as well. The cuts on the blocks were neat enough, but the edges were a little bit rough. And rather than individually sanding each one, I'm going to put them inside this empty paint bucket and dump in about a cup of dry sand. Pounding on the lid and shaking it vigorously does a very good job of rounding over the corners, although it did make them a little bit dusty, but nothing that can't be blown away. With all the blocks made, I can start building, and the first step, of course, is to pick a good location and carefully lay it out. And as I understand it, they excavated around the entire perimeter of the base before they started the first course. And that's what I'm trying to replicate here. What you're watching here is a key point in how this was built. Construction can happen on all four sides at the same time, specifically in the corners. Masons of every kind throughout history have always started on the corners and worked their way towards the middle. And I'm pretty sure that's what they did here as well. In fact, I have some evidence that I'll show later that backs this up. You would always put your best workers on the corners, your most skilled people, since it's the corners that actually dictate how each course goes up. After the first course is finished all the way around, they moved up to the second, and to get the right slope, all you need to do is step back the next course up by a specific amount from the course below. And again, while the outside perimeter was being constructed, the interior was being filled up as well. And right about now, you might be saying, how exactly did they move the stones up? Of everything else involved in building these, this seems to be the biggest mystery. Now we get back to the dimensions of the individual stones, and I'll show how I think that's important. The stones were roughly twice as long as they were wide and deep, so that when you actually stand one up on end, the tipping point is in the middle, which is level with the top of the block you want to put it up on. So it really wouldn't take much effort to tip it up onto that course and slide it forwards. And you're probably saying that these stones are massively heavy, and there's no disputing that. I think we can all agree that moving stones across flat land is fairly trivial, especially for the people that built these. It seems like they didn't have any problem whatsoever moving and handling large stones. There's been lots of conjecture on how they were moved up. Some have suggested that giant ramps were built. Others have put forth ideas of elevators that use water to lift the stones, which in my opinion is absolutely not feasible or practical. Of all of the theories, the ramp idea is the most likely. However, you don't really need to build another ramp when you're already building a ramp. The size of a pyramid are sloping after all, and if you use the method that I described earlier to lift the stones up, all you'd have to do is make allowances for that as you build the pyramid higher. And what I mean are areas where the stepping up is not as steep as the outside of the pyramid. And if I were building a pyramid, I'd want one of those on each side. And if you look closely at the sides, or especially on an aerial view, you'll see these very noticeable lines where it looks like the pyramid face dips in. On my pyramid, this would be where I left out blocks so that I could move other blocks up. Very much like a stairway. Eventually it could have gotten to the point where they could have eliminated two of those stairways. But given how big these pyramids actually are, I think that would be very close to the top. 
It's also not beyond the realm of possibility that at some point they could have built over one or two of these stairways using larger stones to bridge over the opening. And with that done, they could continue building above while the stairway is still being used. But I personally don't think that's what happened. It's just a possibility. Another possibility is they built stairs on the outside of the pyramid, and this would be especially useful for the very top. But again, given the overall size of the pyramid, I really don't think that they would have to do that either. The stones they used at the top were much smaller than the ones they used at the bottom, so they might have been able to use the natural step structure of the pyramid itself to lift those stones up, as I demonstrated before. As you probably know, the pyramids were not just big piles of blocks like this. They were actually clad on top of this with much better looking stone, and I believe that that was done from the top down. You would start with the capstone and get that in place and then do the next course down. And in the model, I'm just using straight pieces, but you have to imagine that these are individual blocks. And I'm also only doing one side when all four sides would be done at the same time on a real pyramid. That brings us to the end and I hope you found it entertaining at least. The fact is no one knows for sure exactly how they did this. And unless we develop time travel, we never will. I do know one thing for certain, though. It wasn't with the help of aliens from outer space.